welcome back to my channel. So today, as the uh, title said, the world's most venomous tarantula and the Pulsotheria metallica. So that's the one that we're gonna look at today. And this is my adult female. I think she's uh, just over 16 centimeters in leg span, so she's got a few more to go, but absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna have a closer look and we're gonna talk about this genus alone today. And then I'm also gonna show you just some pairing. I've got this, which is the female, and I've got a couple of males, which I'm swapping around over the course of a month. So we'll go through and have a look at that. So first off, what do I mean by um, the most venomous tarantula in the world? Is it the deadliest? No, I don't think it is. You can see the bright coloration there, which we'll talk about in a second, and a slight difference in the variant there of this mature male. So this male here is um, no longer with us. Um, paired with her once and then never did it again, never paired and always seem to annoy the female, which you'll see here. This is the male on the outside of the glass there that Lucy's just trying to tap in. And she just, for some reason, doesn't like him. Don't know why, but you'll see on the other male in a second um, that she does with that one. But I couldn't actually get a full confirmed pairing on camera. Whenever I put the, the torch on, the light, and got in closer, um, she just didn't like it and scuttled off. So we put them in a dark area, kept an eye on them, and I managed to watch them pair together. So this is the male. So we go back to what I was saying about this actual video, uh, the most venomous tarantula in the world. Potentially, yes. I mean, I think the genus alone, the Pulsotheria, is the most venomous tarantulas um, that I have and that there are in the world. There's some different makeups of venom where other species can have different um, properties, like the OBT would react slightly different. But for this one, though, I do believe that these are the most venomous genus, so the Pulsotheria. So these genus here and every other brightly coloured venomous animal in the wild um, is aposematic. So signals in nature are primarily visual using bright colours and high contrast patterns such as stripes, which you see here on the femur. They're way more vibrant, um, the blues, but the yellow bands going across. So that's where we identify. It's like a warning signal in nature. So what is the function of a posematism? It is to prevent attack by warning potential predators that the prey animal has defenses, such as being unpalatable or poisonous. So it is a warning, it's nature's way of saying, leave me alone, I am dangerous. So in this genus here, the Pulsifers, if everyone keeps these in the hobby, they've all got the yellow bands. They've all got very striking markings across them. And in nature, with the poison dart frogs and other animals as well, the more vibrant the colour is normally the more potent the venom. So in tarantulas of this genus, um, these colours are a definite warning. So with this one here, this is the first male, no drumming whatsoever. And you can see she gave him a little tap, a little warning, and we had to separate these because um, she just doesn't like her as this male. I've tried so many times, doesn't matter what the scenario we put them in, she just doesn't like him, I don't know why. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get over to the next um, male that I've got, which we know successfully paired with her, which is here in this, this enclosure. Is, he's leggy, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Come this one, have a look. I thought the other one was super leggy. Okay, so just trying to move this second male out and uh, put him in the enclosure. So I just want to touch on as well, obviously, if anyone's watching this now and they're seeing the size of my enclosures, I have had them before in double the size of these enclosures. But if you've watched my previous videos, you'll understand that my Pulsiferia female, she would move about the enclosure so, so much, very skittish. And I've learned over time that a happy pokey is one that doesn't move a lot. If it's moving a lot, then it's stressed and um, it's more prone to threat posture mm -hmm. and then more prone to bite. So I re realized that, moved these down into smaller enclosures, absolutely perfect. Then she started laying web and absolutely spot on and is now breeding successfully. Unfortunately, I didn't get uh, confirmed breeding on this video, but it was about a week or so later we have. So we're hoping that they're paired successfully. Uh, and this is the second male. And uh, he's still actually, as I'm uh, speaking over this, he's actually still in with her at the moment. So cross fingers for these. 
But uh, regards to the venom again, as I bite reports, Google, you can't really find much information, but on arachnid boards, I've managed to find somebody that had taken a bite from a young one, I think it was about four to five centimeters on the fingertip, and he had symptoms for pretty much within 20 minutes, and uh, they went on for up to a week. So I mean, just look at that, the color there, it's just so vibrant, and that's the warning bands, the yellow you can see on there. The males are slightly duller in color, but off camera, they've also got like a reddish sort of tinge on their hairs, but they still have the yellow markings as a warning, which they will lift their legs in the air if they ever need to. But as I was saying, the symptoms that I found on the arachno board were some elevated heart rate, uh, severe sweating and cramping, but that was only a small pochi, so you don't know how much venom they actually injected. But uh, I would say that this is the most venomous in uh, the tarantula hobby. And, um, but mine personally is a very, very calm one. I think she gives him a little warning in a second, but uh, very, very calm because of how I keep them. So, but what I've also no noticed as well with ours, um, if Lucy does check on some of the spiders as well as I do, if they see her, um, they seem to react different, only some of them compared to when I do. So there's a lot more going on that uh, in the tarantula brain, as we say, than we can um, definitely understand. But uh, definitely I wouldn't want to take a bite off this one. Any any species from this genus really, but I um, thought we'd give you a good look at it there. And I hope you could admire the colors and what nature does. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.